morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. We are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products or a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844 236 6010 is our number on the bright side, and we do have lines open for you. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the websites for one time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business right off your home office, right off your mileage, right off your stamps, get your products at the wholesale price and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, an ideal home business if you're an entrepreneur or if you're entrepreneurially minded for one time $25 fee, you can be in business and you can help change the world with the longevity products. I've been doing it now for 19 years and I can't tell you how many times I've seen people throw away their walkers, get out of their wheelchairs, get off all their medications, lose 100, 100, 120, 150 pounds, up to 200 pounds. I've seen people losing 200 pounds when they get on the longevity products, feel better, have more energy. And if you are an entrepreneur and you want to help spread the word and you want to help change the world, the longevity business is something you want to think about. Please check it out at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% gel, as well as Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine, our Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all made with generous, copious, ridiculously high amounts of vitamin C, as well as retinol, vitamin A. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oil, silicon, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You can check them all out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side. Once again, we've been talking about the importance of salt, sodium chloride, that is, to a healthy body. Salt is really table salt. When we say salt, we really mean table salt from a biochemical standpoint, from an organic chemistry or inorganic chemistry standpoint. Salt means something different. But for our purposes, salt is table salt, and it's 40% sodium and 60% chloride. Those are the two main electrolytes, electrical minerals in our blood, sodium and chloride. And bodily fluids, tears, saliva, bile, and the fluid, most especially the fluid that bathes our cells, contains large amounts of this stuff, sodium chloride, uh, salt. The sodium chloride combination creates an environment 
in the body around the cells, which mimics the ocean and it mimics the ocean that our cells grew up in. So we actually have a little ocean. We carry an ocean inside our bodies. The numerous, there, there are numerous biochemists who, who uh, claim that the bodily fluids in our body, all the bodily fluids in our body, are a close replication of the salt and mineral concentration of the sea. So we have our own ocean inside our bodies. That's pretty darn cool. And this ocean, this, the salt concentration of this ocean, the sodium chloride concentration of this ocean, is tightly regulated. It doesn't go up and down very much unless biochemistry changes. When the blood's salt concentration gets too low, the body will attempt to raise the concentration by eliminating water. So there's more salt compared to water. It eliminates, has water leave the blood and the water leaks into tissues and cells. And this can cause the cells to swell as they absorb the water. That can result in cell breakdown and ultimately cell death. And this is a big problem. The body will attempt to prevent this by causing us to go find some salt. That's called a salt craving. So if your salt concentration gets too low, the body will attempt to, protect, to prevent uh, the, the uh, following biochemical problems associated with fluid changes and cell absorbing, cells absorbing fluids and cells swelling, all by going, having us go out and get some salt. And if you're dealing with sal a salt craving, it's a sign that you need some salt. And you'll pretty much do anything you can do to get your salty fix. It's regulated by the brain. On the other hand, if your sodium chloride levels get too high, cells will, or, uh, uh, cells will lose water, and the water will go into the blood in an effort to dilute the blood. This will lower the salt concentration, and the cells will end up shrinking, again causing cell breakdown and cell death. You can see salt, the movement of salt from cells into the blood, from blood into the cells, is all tightly regulated because if it goes out of control, cells die. So the body is fully equipped to handle salt concentration by forcing us to go get more if it runs low, if salt concentration is too low, or, or the kidneys will excrete more if salt concentration gets too high. The body controls the amount of salt in the blood. It's a very, very tightly regulated system. And the kidneys are our main salt regulating system, if you will. And when there's too much in the blood, we just lose salt in the urine. Now, if you're one of the millions of Americans who's suffering from poor kidney health, even if you have not been diagnosed with kidney disease, keep in mind, the diagnosis of kidney disease is only, you only get diagnosed once it's, the problem has been going on for a long time. So our kidneys start to become less functional, less able to do their work over the course of time. And you may not be diagnosed with kidney disease, but your kidneys may just not be able to handle the load. And if this happens, salt might not be excreted effectively. This can cause blood pressure to rise. Salt absorbs water. This causes blood volume to increase. Blood pressure goes up when your salt gets too high. Kidneys don't eliminate them. High blood pressure is the result. And then the doctor will say, well, we need to restrict your salt. But you can't just restrict your salt and expect yourself to get better. A much better strategy would be to support kidney health. You can't just restrict your salt because you need salt. The body will send you out on salt. You'll go nuts. And on top of all of that, you'll become more prone to, towards other addictions, as we talked about last week. When you try to restrict your salt, you're going to find yourself craving other things, craving sugar, which is a problem, a huge problem, especially for the kidneys. So that makes things worse. The answer, the solution is not to try to restrict your salt, but to work on your kidneys, work on your body's ability to handle salt. And also, there's a very, very important uh, organ, a glandular system that is responsible for handling salt, not quite as important as the kidneys, but still important, and that's the adrenal glands, adrenal on top of the kidneys. There's a very close relationship between the kidneys and the adrenal glands. Under conditions of stress, you're going to secrete salt-retaining hormones. Under conditions of stress, your salt concentration, your blood salt concentration is going to rise. That's going to increase blood pressure. That's a good thing to the body because to the body, that means when your blood pressure goes up, that means you get more blood flow, more, more blood to the muscles so you can get out of a stressful situation. So the two major reasons for, for salt, uh, elevated salt are not salt intake as much as they are the kidneys and the adrenal glands. You want to lower your salt, work on kidneys, work on your kidney health. Number one way to do that is control your sugar intake and relax your body. Reduce the load on the adrenal glands. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we 
are back on the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about well, anything we're speaking about here today, kidney disease, adrenal glands, psychological stress, soft restriction, high blood pressure, which are all subjects we'll be talking about here for the next few We've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. We'll continue talking about for the next few days anyway. 844-236-6010. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls in our next segment. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. They can tell you all about it. You can also sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off our websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so you got two major salt processing systems in the body. One is the kidneys. The kidneys will excrete salt when there's, there's too much in the blood. The adrenal glands will cause you to retain salt when you're under stress. This is all regulated by the stress hormone that you never hear about called aldosterone. You don't never hear about it unless you listen to this program because we talk about aldosterone all the time. Most people know about cortisol and adrenaline. Those are stress hormones. But aldosterone is a very, very important stress hormone when it comes to salt because aldosterone is a salt retention hormone. Could it be that the relationship between elevated salt and a high salt intake and hypertension, essential hypertension, is about adrenal stress. Well, could be. We're all, most of us anyway, are dealing with high stress, uh, high stress lifestyles. 21st century high stress lifestyle. That's going to put a burden on the adrenal glands. This can make it look like salt is the cause of hypertension when actually it's adrenal stress that's causing salt elevation. Over time, if the adrenal glands are chronically activated over and over and over again. They don't get a break. Adrenal gland, the adrenal glands are supposed to kick in with their stress management biochemistry once in a while, occasionally. But we've created a culture where we're all burning through our adrenal hormones. We're all under 24-7 24, 24, uh, stress, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're under stress. Our adrenals never get a break. They're chronically activated. If this happens, eventually blood salt concentrations are going to drop because the adrenals will become so pooped out. They'll be so, so fatigued, they'll run out of their salt-retaining hormones. Then you're going to go crave salt. That's why if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue issues, you want to proactively hit your salt button. You want to give yourself salt before you go for the potato chips. If you're one of the millions of Americans, I don't, there's no real numbers. Nobody knows how many people have adrenal fatigue issues. But if you're craving salt, there's a good chance that, that's, uh, that you're dealing with that. Give yourself some salt, but do it in a healthy way. Put a, couple, uh, put a teaspoonful of Celtic sea salt in some water and drink it. Sip on it. Don't drink it down quickly, but just sip on it slowly. When you, when you don't like the taste of it anymore, you don't eat anymore. That way you don't go for the chips or the pretzels or the pizza or all the salty foods that we crave. So the first thing that happens when your adrenal glands or one of the things that happens when your adrenal glands are chronically activated is you're going to go low salt. You're going to become low salt and you're going to crave salt. The second thing that will happen is your thyroid will, become, uh, will begin to slow down. And that, too, can cause salt cravings. That, too, can cause low salt levels. Hyponatremia, by the way, is the technical term for uh, low salt in the blood. Hypo means low. Nate, N-A-T, is the chemical name for salt. Uh, uh, emia means blood. Low salt in the blood. Hyponatremia. And hypothyroidism and hyponatremia go hand in hand. Again, could it be that our salt craving issues, the fact that we love salt so much, is about our hypothyroid issues? There's millions of, of Americans who are hypothyroid. So both adrenal fatigue and hypothyroidism can be causes of low salt levels in the blood, and that can lead to salt cravings. The body needs salt. Hyponatremia is a big problem, and actually it's a common problem, especially when we're sick, especially in the hospital. If you're in the hospital and you're sick, there's a good chance that you're low blood salt. That's why they stick it right in your blood, IV. 
Hyponatremia is a common condition and you don't necessarily have to be hospitalized to have it. If you're hypothyroid, there's a good chance that you're hyponatremic, that you got low blood salt. If, you're, uh, adre if your adrenal glands are stressed, if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue, again, there's a good chance that you're low salt. There, this points us to a very, very interesting and very underappreciated relationship between the adrenal glands and the thyroid. I call this the adrenal thyroid axis. And you don't hear very many people talking about it, unfortunately. Anything that happens to the thyroid is going to affect the adrenals, and anything that affects the adrenals is going to affect the thyroid. They are linked by this, high, by this adrenal thyroid axis. This is, uh, this is true about all the glands in the body. The whole body is a system, but it's especially true with the adrenal, uh, with the, uh, adrenal glands and the thyroid. There's a particularly strong connection between the adrenals and the thyroid. I call it the adrenal thyroid axis, and it's the third point on our triangle of disease. If you've been listening to this program, you know we talk about this adrenal thyroid axis a lot. You don't hear, you don't hear very many healthcare professionals talking about it, and this is really important. This is super important, considering that these two systems are not only the jumping off point to all chronic degenerative disease, but we all try to deal with our thyroid without trying to work on our adrenal glands. You can't focus on the thyroid without focusing on the adrenal glands. And if you're dealing with a chronic long-term degenerative disease, rest assured you are hypothyroid, period, and hyperadrenal or at least dealing with adrenal fatigue issues. There is no such thing as a chronic long-term degenerative disease. I don't care if it's heart disease. I don't care if it's cancer. I don't care if it's autoimmune disease. I don't care what it is, connective tissue disease, whatever your long-term chronic health challenge is behind it, you will find hypothyroidism and you will find a messed up adrenal gland and you'll find a problem in this adrenal thyroid axis, the third point on the triangle of disease. And what this also means, this adrenal thyroid axis, is that adrenal issues will ultimately affect your thyroid and because of this it is impossible to address the thyroid without addressing the adrenal glands, without addressing stress issues, without addressing chronic long-term stress. Let me say that again, that is so darn important. If you have been diagnosed hypothyroid, if you're, and you don't need to be diagnosed hypothyroid, you just have to know you have a chronic long-term health challenge. So if you have any thyroid issue, you cannot address it without addressing the adrenals and your stress, period. And this failure of the medical model to, uh, to deal with the adrenal issues that underlie poor thyroid functioning is the number one reason for the abysmal failure of endocrinology, the science of hormones, the study of hormones when it comes to dealing with hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is notoriously impossible to treat because the thyroid isn't the problem. The thyroid is responsive to the adrenal glands, the stress. When your adrenals are chronically activated, your thyroid will slow down. And this connection, this relationship between the adrenals and the thyroid is critical to understand if you're one of the millions of Americans who's dealing with an underactive thyroid. There's nothing your doctor can do to, to deal with the thyroid, but you, got, you can do all kinds of things to improve thyroid health if you work on the stress, if you work on your adrenals. All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny. 442366010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. I'm pharmacist Benny, 442366010 is our number, and we do have a couple lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a minute, so hang tight. If you're on hold, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, head to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase longevity products or sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Our number, 844-236-6010, and we'll get your calls here in just a moment from uh, the American Heart Association, published in the journal Psychonomic Bulletin and Review. What food gets people's attention? Junk food, by far, no surprise there. A new study finds that images of junk food are more distracting than those of healthy food. We are hardwired, 
us check this out. We are hardwired to go for junk food. That's because junk food is food that is super high energy or contains lots of salt. Sugar is energy, of course. Fat is energy. And then salt. We're, we're hardwired to go for salt and go for sugar and go for fat. And food manufacturers know this, so they know that the more they load their food up with sugar and salt and fat, the more we're going to want to eat the food. We're hardwired to do it. So what you got to do is you got to hit your satisfaction buttons, which are located in the brain, without going for the junk food. The best way to hit your satisfaction button, the I'm full button and I'm satisfied button, is to be proactive with your fat, to be proactive with your salt, and to be proactive with your carbohydrates. How do you do it? Well, you're proactive with your fat by eating good fat, lots of it, making sure you're eating lots of good fat, butter and coconut oil. When you top, when you get enough fat in your system, you're not going to want any more fat. So trying to go low fat is counterproductive. You hit your fat buttons by eating fat and you're going to naturally stay away from, you're naturally going to gravitate away from fried processed fatty foods, which are a big problem. How do you hit your salt buttons? By doing Celtic sea salt and water. If you do Celtic sea salt and water and a couple tablespoons of butter or, or coconut oil, you're going to find that you're less likely to eat potato chips. You'll have your salt needs met and you'll have your fat needs met. How do you deal with carbo cravings? Vegetables and protein. Especially protein that contains the BCAAs, the branched chain amino acids. That is uh, protein foods that are dense protein, animal protein, egg protein, meat protein, fish protein, dairy protein. These contain, whey protein especially, these contain the BCAAs. They'll allow you to wean yourself away from the sugar. Eating, uh, using the amino acid glutamine can also help you. Glutamine, of course, is also found in high protein foods like eggs and whey and dairy. All right, let's see, one more here and then we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010. This is from the American Society of Nephrology. Insomnia linked with early death and kidney dysfunction. Why? Well, insomnia means your cortisol levels are up. If you can't sleep at night, rest assured, you are, no pun intended, you are dealing with high cortisol, especially if you're tired but can't sleep. If you're not tired and you can't sleep, get up and do something. If you're not tired, you're not tired. Just go do something. Read a book. Write something. Do something productive. But if you are tired, really tired, and you just can't fall asleep, you've got this jittery kind of energy, that's cortisol. And that's what's linked to early death and kidney dysfunction. Not necessarily the insomnia, although sleep is very important for healing and recovery. But if you can't sleep, your cortisol levels are up, and that's what causes the disease, especially kidney dysfunction. Stress leads to kidney dysfunction. Stress leads to early death. This is that connection between uh, cortisol levels, stress, stress hormones, and problems with the kidneys, and problems with salt excretion, and problems with elevated salt, as we've been talking about. It's very simple, you guys. I know we talk a lot about biochemistry, and I give you all the mechanisms, which I love. Hopefully, you like it, too. But it's really very simple. Relax the body. Make sure you're oxygenating. Avoid the problem foods. Avoid the junk foods. Keep your blood sugar stable. Get out and exercise a little bit. Make sure you're relaxing, resting. There's so many ways that we can stay healthy without interfacing with the medical model. It's the simple little things. Health is not about medicine. Those are two separate ideas, you guys. Unless you're dealing with an, a, 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 an acute breakdown in the body, an infection or a trauma, health is not medicine. We've got to separate those two ideas out because the medicine people are not going to tell us this because they make money off of us. They profit off of us. They're not going to tell you that health is not medicine, but I'm telling you, health is not medicine. Health is the triangle of disease, and health is the fourfold square of health. Number one, reduce your sugar, no, uh, uh, eliminate problem food, stabilize digestive, the digestive system, work on the microbiome, work on your blood sugar system. Number two, relax the body. Number three, the fourfold square of health. Exercise, rest, respirate. Exercise, rest. Uh, 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 move your body, respirate, make sure you're uh, uh, resting appropriately, and make sure you're on a good nutritional supplement program. Nutriate, respirate, move, and rest, the fourfold square of health. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Washington and say good morning to Carol. Hey, Carol, what's up? Carol, Carol. 
Carol in Washington, you there? I don't hear Carol, so we're going to put you back on hold, Carol. One going once, going twice, going three times. All right, let's go to Cheryl in Florida. Good morning, Cheryl. You there? How are you? Cheryl? Hello? Can you hear me? Hmm. I wonder what's Hello? with our phones here. You can hear me. Cheryl, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Cheryl. What's going on? How can we help you? I got a question for you. Yes, I'll try ma'am. To make it quick. Okay. Um, back in July, um, I had a DNC and ablation. Okay. Um, for heavy menstrual periods. I had okay. a follow up appointment in August where they did another ultrasound and told me that they found a, um, a cyst in my ovary that Got was it. a little deformed. Got it. And then they sent me to a cancer institute. I went and had an MRI, went to the Cancer Institute, and the doctor is telling me that um, that the cyst is about four centimeters. Okay. And that um, it's an intermediate threat, and that they would like to take it out, my ovary out, to see if it's cancer. Well, I can't tell you and if it's cancer. In- I can't tell you if it's cancerous or not. But what I can tell you is that when you have cysts and endometriosis and excessive growth of the endometrial lining, you, you certainly have menstrual menstrual problems. Correct? Cramping, bloating, terrible yeah. periods. Is that correct? All right, how old are you, ma'am? Forty-eight. Okay. Has it been going on your whole life? Pretty much. All righty. You got an issue with your hormone. The two major hormones: estrogen and insulin. So you're probably a diabetic, whether you've been diagnosed that way or not, or you probably have, I shouldn't say, I don't like using that term, but you're probably thrown, your blood sugar's thrown off, and you probably have problems with fat metabolism. This is for every, what I'm going to tell here, what I'm going to uh, uh, tell Cheryl here, I want everybody who's dealing with endometriosis or any kind of menstrual problems, uh, problem periods, or even for that matter, infertility issues to listen up. You're dealing with excessive estrogen or problems metabolizing estrogen, number one, and blood sugar problems. And I'm going to tell you what to do with that about that when we come back from our break, okay? Because it's a very important subject. Okay. And I can't tell you whether or not you have, you know, the cancer is there, but I wouldn't let them take out your organs until you do some other things. And we'll talk about that when we come back okay. from our break. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the bright side, and we are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and Critical Health News, I'm sorry, brightsideben.com and bentfuchsarchives.com. You can uh, check out the longevity products at criticalhealthnews.com and brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com, and you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well. All right, we're talking to Cheryl in Florida about cysts and ablations and DNCs and endometriosis and bad periods. Are you there, Cheryl? Cheryl? Yeah. Cheryl? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Hi. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. Okay, so I got some calls I want to get to, so I'm going to go a little bit quick, okay? One of the things about the okay. body is, is where the problem shows up is not where the problem starts. So the problem is showing up for you in your reproductive system, but that's not where it's starting. It's mostly starting in the intestine and in the liver, and this is where estrogen is broken down and metabolized. When estrogen is not broken down correctly, toxic estrogen will build up, and this can cause all kinds of, all kinds of health problems, but especially reproductive health problems. So first thing you want to do, first thing you want to do, I, I'm sorry, I got a little echo there, ma'am. Can, okay. Don't mind. Um, turn, yeah, turn your radio off there. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. You want to work on your digestive health. The intestine and the liver are digestive organs largely. You want to work on digestive health. Do a Swero V cleanse. That is, uh, stop eating for a couple of days. Just do Swero V, uh, which you can find off uh, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Swero V cleanse is half a bottle of Swero V every hour for two days. Uh, And then um, when you start eating again, you want to eat very carefully, paying close attention to how your body responds to specific foods. Your body will tell you when you have a food problem, likely it's going to be your favorite foods and likely it's going to be fatty foods. There's a major connection between hormone, female hormone issues and fats and fat metabolism. So be very careful around fatty foods and pay attention to how your body responds to fatty foods and to uh, to your favorite foods as well. You're going to need to eliminate foods that you have a problem with. 
Then you want to start loading up on good bacteria, probiotics. Probiotics help uh, break down and process estrogen. I would be using the nightly essence, five to 10 capsules a day. Make sure you're using fiber every day. Uh, estrogen is cleared out through the bowels. That will take the load off the liver and off the intestine. So make sure you're doing flax fiber every day. You want to make sure you're regular, whatever it takes to stay regular, because this is how you clear out estrogen. I would also be getting on progesterone cream today. I wouldn't wait, I wouldn't wait a day before I was on progesterone if I were you. Uh, if you can't find progesterone cream uh, or a good source of progesterone or you don't want to go to the doctor and get a prescription, and don't get fake progesterone, by the way. Get the real progesterone, fake progesterone, which goes by the name medroxy progesterone, can be a big problem. So get real progesterone cream or real progesterone trochies, uh, sublingual tablets or something from the doctor. Or if you don't want to deal with that, at least use pregnenolone, which is like an over-the-counter version. Not quite pr progesterone, okay. but it's similar. Pregnenolone. Then the next piece of the puzzle is your blood sugar. You got to keep that stable. You've got to treat yourself like a diabetic. You can no longer eat your favorite foods. If you're like most of us and your favorite foods include rice and potatoes and sweets and pasta and foods that break down into sugar, you've got to be very, very respectful of those. After you, uh, if you do eat those kinds of foods, afterwards get on the sweeties. In fact, just get on the sweeties. Uh, two or three capsules after all your meals. Get on the ultimate niacin. Get on the ultimate selenium, which is very protective against excess estrogen, 600 micrograms a day. And then make sure you're using the Healthy Start Pack, and I would be doing 9 to 12 EFA capsules a day. So you're going to focus on the intestine, you're going to focus on uh, eliminating problem foods, and you're going to focus on blood sugar. Fatty foods can be a problem as well. If you do notice that you bloat or you're gassy after fatty foods, you may want to try using the Ultimate Enzymes after your fatty meals. You're not focusing on the, where the problem seems to be, which is your reproductive system. You're focusing on the precursors to the problem, which is estrogen slash fat metabolism and blood sugar. Does that make sense, ma'am? Okay. And by the way, bonus, yep. you're going to lose weight and your blood pressure will drop and all your blood fats will improve and you'll add years to your life. How's that? Well, that'll be awesome. Okay, Cheryl. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have, Have a, a good day. Have a beautiful day. All right, let's go. I got Carol back. Carol in Washington. What's going on, Carol? Hopefully we got you back there. Yeah. Can you hear Hi, me? Hi, Carol. Yes, what's, oh, good. what's going on? Uh, as a quick aside, on your, uh, when I go looking for the articles that you read, I can't find them. You've got about 10 websites. Can you tell me where to go <laughs> to find those articles? I do, I do have lots of websites. That's true. I've got to figure out what to do with them. Go, the best place is pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. My question is HCG. I was given yes. by my nat naturopath uh, some for, for injections. Loss? For my sciatica, oh, that's interesting. A thousand IU for every day for a week, and then the second week and third week one every other day. You, you have to go into your naturopath every day. No, I have the needles and the stuff to do it at home. What do I you see. think of HCG? Uh, I wouldn't be messing with it. I'm surprised that you, you said a naturopath is doing this. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. Does that sound familiar? HCG, that's a pregnancy hormone. I, I wouldn't mess around with it at all. Now, they were using it for weight loss. I hadn't heard about it for sciatica. When you're pregnant, your body goes into this building mode because you're building a baby, obviously. So when you're in building mode, there's growth and repair are upregulated, anti-inflammatory effects. You can get some anti-inflammatory effects from being in building mode. Uh, and, and then there's the weight loss benefits from being in building mode. So the latest thing is giving HCG. Uh, I'm not, I don't like messing around with hormones. I, th I think that's playing with fire. If you do want to... If you do want to uh, uh, use some hormonal therapy for dealing with sciatica, go with progesterone. Tell your nat naturopath to give, pr give you progesterone. HCG, actually, one of the ways HCG works is by stimulating your progesterone. Just ask for progesterone. That's what I would is be doing. Is that an injection, too? No. You can take that as a cream, or you can get that sublingually under your tongue. Or okay. there's even capsules now. Tell them you want progesterone. It's a much more okay. benign hormone, and it may have some of the same benefits. Now, sciatica is an inflammatory condition. You, the, the, I'm very surprised a naturopath would not be working with the inflammatory, with the inflammation, and give you HCG. Did he tell you anything about foods that would reduce inflammation or stretching techniques for reducing inflammation um, or stay supplements? Uh, stay away from the cruciferous family. Yeah. Well, peppers. I, you know, that's, that's, that's really silly. you got a silly naturopath. Can you get your naturopath to come on the air with me? Oh, well, 
Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> okay, well, tell them that I, there's this pharmacist on the radio that says this is, these are all very silly things to do. Maybe then that'll, that'll incentivize them to come on the air with me. Uh, what you want to do is avoid problem foods, foods that are problems for you that cause gas, bloating, digestive discomfort, uh, uh, processed foods, sugar foods, fried fats. Those are the kind of foods you want to avoid. Cruciferous vegetables. Anyway. Yeah. You avoid them anyway? Yes, I do. Good for you. So continue avoiding those. There still may be some problem foods that you're not aware of, so kind of pay some attention to, but you're on the right track. Avoiding sugar is also a good thing to do. I would be using glucosamine supplements. I would be using collagen supplements. I would be, if you're not already doing some yoga or some kind of stretching exercises, I would be doing those as well. That can oftentimes relieve pay, uh, inflammatory pain associated with, with, uh, with the joints and with the vertebrae. Uh, and then maybe see a chiropractor, who's somebody who can manipulate you at that level. Sciatica is caused by inf an, some kind of inflammatory condition that's affecting the nerves. It could have to do with, with the, the bone and the joints themselves, or it could have to do with something that's in the blood, which would mean food. Uh, what do you I would think be, about prolotherapy? Uh, prolotherapy? Yeah. Yeah, prolotherapy is great, but it's not going to take care of the problem. It may relieve some of the discomfort, but if you have some inf inflammation that's going on in there in, in response to something you're eating or something that's happening in the blood, it's not going to take care of the problem. But it may give you some relief. And I, I've seen people get good results, relief from prolotherapy. So it, it, that might be something that I would try. I'd be really careful about the HCG personally. If you are going to do HCG, make sure you're doing bentonite clay every day or, oh. or, ze, or zeolite every day or chlorophyll every day. All three I of those. I bentonite so much. Good deal. Uh, maybe a teaspoon every day in water, a couple teaspoons every day in water. You don't want to get too constipated. You can also use charcoal. All of these will have an effect of pulling the HCG out of your your body after your, your body's done using it. It'll help, help you with detoxification. And if there's any toxicity in your body, which there probably is because we all have that, it'll help clean that out as well. Right. Well, right. how, well, how soon after uh, an injection would I use the Just clay? use it regularly. Just use it every day. Oh, okay. Just, just do it every day. All right? Okay. And Thank also, so last, but, last but not only tell you one more thing. Uh, probiotics, yeah. the nightly essence, can help purify your blood as well and help pure, uh, eliminate the HCG as well. So good, the nightly essence. Okay. Get on that. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, Carol. Uh, I'm going to, uh, gosh. You know, I'm sorry if I let you on hold. Call back tomorrow, and we'll get to you uh, first up uh, tomorrow. Please tell our call screen we left you on hold. I'm sorry to do that to you. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out my websites, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. For all the longevity products, or call 866-735-2470, and they can uh, give you the scoop. They can also sign you up if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team. And don't forget to check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful Wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.